go to the folks who talk about this. Uh, Nia is here, Alice is here, Elliot as well, introduced him before, Manu. So Nia, I'm going to start with you. Good evening. I'm going to start with you. We're learning incredible new details about Trump's relentless campaign to try to get Mike Pence to reject the will of the voters. But countless people all around Trump knew that it was a massive lie. So why was it able to, to go so far, you think? Well, listen, I, I think there are a couple of themes here, one of which is this enduring belief uh, in the guardrails, right? American democracy is stronger than any one uh, president, any one party, uh, and that ultimately democracy would be strong enough to withstand uh, anything that Donald Trump wanted to do, his enablers uh, wanted to do, or his supporters wanted to do. I think the other theme here is if you are Donald Trump uh, in the aftermath of the election on the eve of January 6th, you're a man who has been a able to get away with uh, breaking lots of rules and suffering no consequences, right? I mean, if you think about, for instance, uh, his first impeachment hearing, uh, he, at this point, <clears throat> must realize that he is going to have people to rally around him, to believe him, to defend him, uh, no matter what. Uh, and, and so, in the end, you have a man who goes to great lengths uh, at pressuring his uh, Mike Pence with all sorts of lies, who has spent years seeding this idea that American elections uh, aren't to be trusted. He started that in 2016 after he lost the popular vote. Uh, so he believes, and in, in some ways rightly so, that he could do anything uh, and get away with it. And it could be uh, that come 2024, uh, he could be elected president again and not necessarily face any punishment for this grave threat uh, to American democracy uh, that he incited <clears throat> on January 6th. Elliot, even John Eastman, the man behind this false theory that Pence could overturn the election, was well aware that he was peddling complete BS. This is what he heard. This is what we heard from Pence's general counsel, Greg Jacob. Watch this. We had an extended discussion, an hour and a half to two hours on January 5th. Um, and when I pressed him on the point, I said, John, if the vice president did what you were asking him to do, we would lose nine to nothing in the Supreme Court, wouldn't we? Um, and he initially started, well, I think maybe you would lose only seven to two. Um, and after some further discussion, acknowledged, well, yeah, you're right. We would lose nine nothing. So, and Jacob says that Eastman told Trump directly that his plan would violate the Electoral Count Act. So it, so it was all blatant. It was, it was a blatant intentional lie. Right. And there's a reason, Don, why he then uh, pleads the Fifth Amendment against, you know, the right against self-incrimination, because he thinks he might have committed a crime 146 times. There's a reason why he asks specifically for a presidential pardon at some point, because he thinks he might have committed a crime. And what he was doing, being full well aware of the fact that he was asking uh, or, you know, pushing for the government to take actions that he knew were unlawful, uh, he's violating the law. Um, there's any number of fraud statutes and particularly you know, conspiring to defraud the United States that he may have committed. And a federal judge has already said that he, perhaps working in concert with the president of the United States, might have violated the law uh, at least two different times. And so, you know, it is quite shameful here. And, you know, one thing that struck me today was from one of his emails to Greg Jacob, one of the ones that says about the president of the United States, you know him, once he gets something in his head, it's hard for him to change course course. They knew that they were breaking the law, and the president clearly knew that all the, the, uh, what they were pushing was wrong. But, you know, it's just hard for him to change course. And so uh, what, we, what we saw here, Don, was possibly evidence of a crime. Yeah. To Alice Stewart now. Alice, the, the committee laid out how Trump knew there was a mob at the Capitol when he tweeted Pence didn't have the courage to do what, he need, what needed to be done. This is what we heard from the rioters at the time. Nothing but a traitor, and he deserves to burn with the rest of them. So this, so this all escalated after Pence. What, what happened? Did Pence, 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 didn't, yeah. Pence didn't do what he, we wanted? Pence voted against Trump. Okay, and that's when all this started? Yep, that's when we marched on the Capitol. We've been shot at with rubber bullets, tear gas. We just heard that Mike Pence is not going to reject any fraudulent electoral votes.
frightening. I mean, honestly. And Alice, I see you shaking your head, and you're right. That, that is the right response. The former White House aide, by the way, Alice, says that, tr that Trump tweet was like pouring gasoline on a fire. Do you agree with that? Uh, absolutely. He just made a, a horrible situation even worse. And, and while that was going on, we heard testimony today that Mike Pence was uh, in the safety uh, of the Capitol, 40 feet away from these protesters who had said that they were more than willing to take his life. He was in there with his family and his staff. And, and I can't get past the optics of, look right there, Mike Pence uh, standing there waiting to do his constitutional duty to certify the uh, election results. And he is there also in the bunker with his Bible. And across town, we have Trump in the Oval with his outrage. That is just so frustrating to think that this happened. But this is yet another example of Donald Trump, uh, regardless of the advice he was given, what he knows to, what anyone knows to be true, he goes with what he wants to be fact. And he shops around his advisors for who will confirm his belief in what he wants to do. And just when we heard the other day, uh, Rudy Giuliani, and you thought there couldn't be more of a clown in this situation, enter John Eastman, who goes and continues to provide uh, uh, factually inaccurate information to the president, giving him advice that, as we heard Greg Jacobs say today, uh, was there was no justifiable legal theory for what Eastman was telling Trump, yet he went ahead and did it anyway. And this is, this is uh, despicable what happened. And the more we hear what happened, it just defies reality. Uh, I'm glad to see the DOJ is keeping an eye on this and is uh, asking for witness testimony. I, I hope that people that are responsible are held accountable, uh, but uh, I'll also be interested to see what happens in the court of law, but if this does change any minds in the court of public opinion. So, so you, you know, Alice, you know, you occasionally get into skirmishes with people on the panel, right, who are more Trump supporters. You were a Trump supporter. You're a Republican, and you're saying this. Um, I asked um, Olivia Choi earlier about fear, right? Do you ever get concerned about speaking your mind and saying these things about Rudy Giuliani and the president and what they did regarding January 6th? No, I, I get a lot of people with, uh, on social media that like to use their social media bravery and hide behind uh, their uh, an anonymity. Uh, I'm not worried about speaking my mind. I would much rather uh, say what's, what I know to be true and what I know to be fact than to uh, blindly follow uh, f a false narrative about uh, election fraud and a stolen election, which most people that are rational and of sound mind and body realize that there's no factual basis to uh, a, a, the f election fraud and no reason to uh, incite this riot at the Capitol. After hearing of, you know, what those folks were saying about the former vice president and about others, um, that what they wanted to do, it just had to ask you that. I, I would not ask you that question otherwise. If we did not have an insurrection and so much violence going on, as it relates to the, the former president. So thank you for your candor on that. Elliot, let's play more. Here's what else the committee said about the danger to Mike Pence. Vice President Pence and his team ultimately were led to a secure location where they stayed for the next four and a half hours, barely missing rioters a few feet away. Approximately 40 feet. That's all there was. 40 feet between the vice president and the mob. Mr. Attorney, did the committee make the case that Trump's actions led to a direct threat to the VP's life? Uh, certainly. Um, you know, perhaps not in a criminally chargeable way, Don, but, but uh, they've been making the case repeatedly that the president, um, you know, so for instance, uh, at the very first hearing, they played uh, the moment at which the tweet is read at 2.26 p.m., I believe, uh, and then a guy's on the megaphone shouting, hang Mike Pence, after, after pre the president tweeted about Mike Pence. So they're drawing a link between the two uh, as one of the causes of the violence and the harm on, on the day. You know, something that's sort of getting buried today was from Judge Michael Ludig, the conservative judge that testified uh, today, making the case that this isn't just about January 6th, but the underlying causes that led to the kinds of things that were in your question, Don, this violence and this sort of un 
unrest hasn't gone away. Right. And the under and sort of what got us here could continue to plague the 2022 or 2024 elections. Mm -hmm. um, if not dealt with uh, in a very, very serious way. And th that was, he said it explicitly today. He said it in an op-ed back in February. And, you know, thank God that it was a conservative voice, the one making it, as a sort of trusted messenger making that point. It's a very important one. This isn't just about one day of violence. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you could even make the argument that Trump might be more powerful now than he was then. If you think about where Republicans are, uh, the vast majority of them believe in Donald Trump's uh, big lies, which were sort of built on smaller lies, uh, which we saw uh, laid out so masterfully today in that hearing. Uh, he seems poised to uh, run for re-election, to announce at some point that he's going to run for re-election. And you see that in states across the, the country, people People are being installed who believe in the big lie and who could have the power to overturn uh, the will of voters in a state like Nevada, in a state like uh, Georgia, in a state like Arizona, in a state like Pennsylvania. You've got a governor who's running who's saying uh, he believes in the big lie and he would have the power to appoint a secretary of state who could do Donald Trump's bidding. So, uh, you know, you talk about that clear and present danger uh, that Ludwig talked about. It is very, very abundantly clear that in some ways 2020 was just sort of a dry run, a prelude of what we could see uh, in 2024. Uh, Nia, I want to ask you, and I asked John Kasich a similar question, and, and I, it was poorly phrased because I, I, I don't think, I think that um, Mike Pence deserves credit for upholding democracy. I don't think he's a hero because that's his job, right? So he has gotten a lot of praise from the committee today. The fact that he ultimately upheld the Constitution Will that help or hurt him politically? Because clearly he is also, he may be weighing a run for president as well. You know, listen, there is a share of the Republican Party. We've got uh, Alice on our panel tonight. There is a share of a Republican Party uh, that certainly agrees with Mike Pence, uh, who might vote for him in a primary. But I think the vast majority of Republicans are still very much in line with Trump. You okay. see all of that emotion, right, that yep. is on display uh, on January 6th. That, you know, is not necessarily just contained to those uh, folks. There is a very uh, raw and real emotional attack attachment that many Republicans okay. have to this president and his beliefs. I want to give Alice, Alice, to she invoked president. your name. So what do you say to that about Mike Pence running? Uh, uh, I expect him to do so, and he's going to certainly have a lot of support that he already had and will certainly get a lot more based on what we're learning in, in these hearings. But we're going to have... You think? Uh, uh, be, uh, uh, because uh, who was on earlier who said um, he's going to... Oh, it was Scott Jennings. Scott Jennings said... Donald Trump is going to get up on the stage with everyone and say, you know, would you have done what Mike Pence did on that day? He betrayed our country. Well, most rational Republicans realize that Mike Pence did what he was constitutionally uh, obligated to do, and that is the, the, the right thing to do. Most people realize that that, that was the role of the vice president. And what but we need to do... But honest question, though, Alice, is that where your party is today? And th is that where you think they'll be in 2024? Uh, I... There's a large swath of the Republican Party that still looks at Donald Trump as the titular head of the Republican Party. Many of them are, are not watching the TikTok of these hearings. Mm -hmm. Many of them are looking more at issues like uh, inflation and crime and gas prices as to uh, what they're going to be voting for in 2024. They're not really paying that close attention. And to be quite honest, Don, surprisingly, there's a lot of people, no matter what comes out of this hearing, it's not going to change their mind about Donald Trump and his false belief that there was election fraud. But there are many people that are watching it and learning a lot of things uh, that are quite disturbing about not only what happened on January 6th, but what happened on, on election night and the advice that the president was given by a, a team of serious advisors that he neglected to listen to, mm -hmm. and instead he took the advice of people like Rudy Giuliani and John Eastman. Alice, everyone on the screen is nodding in the affirmative. Are you shocked? Uh, well, I don't, I'll, I'd like to think everyone here is uh, rational people and understands what, uh, what the Constitution stands for and that the Constitution uh, was carried out. I'm just I'm Alice. Kidding. I'm just I'm just here to tell you what you could go to jail for. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, he's just here so he won't get fined. Well, all right, I, don't so I, won't get, get fined. I don't guess I'll get a pardon then. <laughs> Thank you all. I appreciate it. Good to see you. Thanks, Don. Thank